the 55th International Bio Chess Festival already has started and one tournament already is finished in the Grandmaster Triathlon where the GMT, the Chess 960 tournament is over. So it was gathering a total of eight invited Grandmasters who are trying out who is going to be the best in the Chess 960 uh, distance. So the games were really interesting, a lot of uh, unpredictable games, and uh, that's why I think it's a good idea to look back what happened in some of the most interesting games. So we probably have to stop at round one when one of the uh, youngest players in the field, Vincent Keimer, was playing with a white color against an even younger player, Domaraya Gokesh from India, and the clash really started early, right after the game, when Vincent was trying to get aggressive at the king side with a g4 push, but after c6, when Black started to show his ambition at the queen side, uh, here Vincent perhaps was not yet ready for the action. He played a bit slow. Rook f1 clearly preparing either rook d1, king b1 idea, or position the rook just in case at f file. Yet the young Indian here was pretty fast to organize his counterplay with b5. Here, obviously, the white king is in the middle of the action, so Winston tried to complicate matters with c5. But after c takes on d5, takes on d6, knight c6, the white king was in the middle of the action. So after a couple of moves, the young German tried to consolidate his position, but he was never given a chance. So after knight e3, rook d3, take it here and b4, suddenly black joins the bishop on b5 with a deadly force attacking the rook and the knight. And after a couple of moves, the young German had to concede. So that was quite an, a, a terrible start for Keimer and again a great, great uh, way to start a tournament for Gukesh. In the second round, Gukesh continued his winning ways. So after a couple of quiet moves like g3, f4, bringing the bishops in the game, here the young Indian played a4, which was one of the common motifs in the chess 960 tournament, Try to push the a pawn with the rook and a1 as far as possible at the early start of the game in order to create some targets. And it was actually quite surprising that the young Uzbeki Grandmaster Abdu Satorov collapsed very quickly. So after bishop d5, he tried to trade a powerful light square bishop on h1. And after knight f3, knight c3, it was a very interesting clash. So what's going to be better, the two knights or the two bishops? So of course, the young Indian tried to immediately break the center with e4, and Abdus Satorov was just a bit slow. So already the pawn on d5 is becoming a target. He tried to consolidate his position. So now you see this one of the oddities of chess 960 tournament. This is actually a short castle. So white hit the king in the safety. And after queen a2, increased pressure on the pawn on d5. Rook e1, knight a4, another great move. We could see very quickly uh, deteriorating the position for the world rapid champion. After knight c5, queen b3, another target on b7, d takes, knight e6, knight g5. It was actually quite unbelievable how black's position was just collapsing very, very fast. Another powerful move. And after bishop c5, the game was done. So Abdus Satorov had seen it enough, he resigned and for Gukesh, this meant that he was leading a tournament with two points out of the what a surprise start. We could see a lot of very interesting uh, improvising games right at the start in the Chess 960 tournament. And one of the most memorizing games was played by Salem Saleh against Arkady Nidic. So here after c4, e5, knight f3, c5. Of course, there's no opening theory here, but we were really impressed by the move b4. And after a3, white sacrificed the pawn in order to bring the bishop on a3 as quickly as possible. So knight h decided to accept the challenge, but after bishop takes on a3, d6, there was the surprise move, knight x on e5. So clearly with the idea that after dx on e5, there's queen b4, and suddenly black has some issues to defend the rook 
on f8. Well, knight h probably should have taken the knight on e5 anyway and proceeded with knight e6, but he continued with knight b6 and uh, Salem continued to play really energetic chess after moves like c5. D4, trying to rip apart Black's position. Knight v3, he masterfully combined all of his pieces to become a very deadly force. Now the knight on a4 is under attack by the bishop here on d1. And after queen c7, another powerful move. Knight c6, the bishop a4, and after several tactical moves, yet another beauty happened here. After queen b4, threatening with a deadly knight e7 check. Knight h responded with knight e6 and queen d4. So black cannot really take on d4 because this will be a smothered mate. Knight e7, you notice the black rook on h8. So black had to play knight f5 and white simply collected the pawn and was able to convert the game. So really, really impressive dynamic game for United Arab Emirates Grandmaster, who did not score a single draw in the tournament, scoring four wins and losing three games. Also, it was quite important to mention, despite the fact that for perhaps Nadic this was not the greatest tournament, he was able to make a, some sort of um, upset in the fourth round because Gukesh was a surprise leader at the start, having scored three victories in a row. And here he was playing in the fourth round against Nidic with the black color. He was suffering for most of the part of the game. And here, instead of stopping the deep on, uh, Arkady decided to checkmate black. So not only rook e8 is threatened with rook takes on f8, but also rook d8 stopped the deep on. Of course, the young Indian Grandmaster had no choice. He tried to promote his queen. And now it was actually a quite odd that after rook takes on f8, king h7, the only winning move here is rook h8, which was found by knight h, because it's quite funny that after queen f5 check, which is the most obvious move in this position, after g6, there is no follow-up for white, because queen d7 is impossible because of the black queen stands on d1, and of course, queen f7 is impossible <laughs> because the black other queen stands on a2. So after rook f7, rook f8, the game would simply finish in a draw. Instead, he did found the correct move, rook h8, king g6, queen c6, and the black queens are useless. So Black tried to escape at the king on h5, and here white has a number of ways to win this, but queen e8, check, g6, a rook takes on h6, was a beautiful way to wrap up the game. So here black resigns because of king h6, queen h8 is made on the board. Now, let's continue with more games, and uh, I think we also have to look at uh, the tour eventual tournament winners, uh, Winston Keimer, one of the games which he was playing the next round against, again, Knight Edge. And here he showed an amazing understanding of the position. So here, Black has good control of the light squares. Here, Winston played f5, clearly hinting with e4. And after Black's e6, here, Keimer understood that he needs to trade the Knight on d6, rip apart the center with e4, and after a couple of trades, also play bishop f3. After the trade, you could already see that something is terribly wrong with black's position because the bishop on h8 does not really impress and the black queen on b8 also doesn't do much. Now, knight h tried to consolidate his position by playing king b7 and probably somehow bring the queen into the defense. But after rook e7, queen e1 and rook e3, we could see the Alekan gun on the board. After rook d8, here Keimer unleashed a deadly attack. Knight c5 check, black had no choice but to take it, but the big surprise here was not knight x on c5, but knight a5 check, because now white has access to the a5 square and threatening to take the pawn on c6. After king a8, knight c6, queen a5, or raise it, is a deadly threat, so c takes, queen a5, queen b5, this was the end of the game because, um, I mean, black is about to get mated on b7, so he cannot take the rook on e3. 
However, one of the most memorable games of the entire tournament was the following maneuver the next round. Here, Arkady was playing with the white color. He played bishop f3, seemingly threatening to play a5 and rook b7 check. Well, naturally, Gatakomsky with the black color decided to defend against the threat and play a5, targeting the pawn on a4 and also the pawn on h4, just in case. And this was the moment when the Azerbaijani Grandmaster unleashed a very powerful positional exchange sacrifice. Rook takes on b6. After king b6, h5, you could suddenly see the surprise in Gata's uh, face is that you see that the rook on h6 cannot really escape its prison. He did try to play d6, a d4, take it, and king c5, and here Nadej missed his first victory, so which was actually a bit obvious to be honest, go with the king on g5, for example, king e3, king b4, king f4, take it, so black could try to advance the a pawn to a4, but here white has a very powerful idea, bishop d5, not only stopping the y, uh, black's a pawn, but also advancing his own, and this would have been quite a clean victory for the Azerbaijani Grandmaster. Now instead he did play king c3, which was a bit slow, and now in this position we could see that actually it's white who is in the Zugzwang because he has to guard a d5 square, not allow black to play king e5 and thus escape with the rook on f6, and now black did get access to king b4. Now the action continued in a very severe time trouble, and here after King g5, a4, Nidich made a huge mistake by playing bishop e4, which was a blunder. He should have taken the rook, played the same idea, bishop d5, and the game probably would end with a draw. Now suddenly after bishop e4, a3, bishop b1, here Nidich realized after king b3, king b2, black would be just winning. Now, definitely Kamsky saw the idea, but he decided first to snatch the pawn on h5 just in case. Well, Unfortunately for him, this was returning the favor, because now after king b3, white had the surprising move bishop f5, and the game, after a couple of moves, ended in a draw. Now, moving to the final round, we had two leaders in the tournament, Winston Keimer and Oderbeck Abdus Satorov. Both of the players were fighting for the win, and thus in the chest in the Grandmaster Triathlon for the best tiebreak in case there is an even amount of points in the overall rankings. This position arised in Yu Yongi's game against Winsand, and it was actually quite odd because both players were threatened with exchange sacrifice. White is threatening to sacrifice the exchange to play e6, e7 and promote the e pawn, and also Black is threatening to take on d4 and try to promote his own pawn. Either way, white was in trouble here, so he decided to play rook d7, I guess to improve the threat to take on d5, and here, for Vincent, this was basically an easy task to take on d4, play e3, and this pawn is unstoppable, I guess because of king a1, black can at least give a check first on c1, and then simply promote e pawn. Now, after a couple of moves, the Chinese Grandmaster tried to deliver a perpetual check, but it did not work because the e-pawn is unstoppable. Well, it seemed already that Vincent is winning the tournament. Sudden, uh, unexpected turn of events happened in Abdusatorov's final game against Arkady Nadic. Nadic was doing great the entire game. He had an extra pawn. Here he snatched another pawn on a5, so it seemed that everything is clear and Kamer is going to seal the deal. However, after a couple of moves, White was able to create some threats in the time trouble now, meaning the pawn on b7 is weak. Now, here Black decided that he is the one trying to checkmate White and gave a check and played queen a1, threatened with some checks on c1 or b1. However, after queen b4, it appeared that this is just one check and White's threats, queen b7, are more serious. So here, Nadic simply had to try something. See, he didn't find any defense. And after Rook D2, Bishop F4, he simply resigned. So that was really, really surprised twist of the tournament. Unfortunate end for Nadic, but also this meant we had a shared first place in the tournament. 
So in the end, we had two winners of the Chess 960 tournament, Winston Keimer and Nodripek Abdusatorov, with five points out of seven. And it was really odd because both of them had exactly the same scores against all of the opponents, as you can see in the rankings. All of the tie breaks were equal. The amount of wins were equal, so according to the tournament regulations, only the tiebreaker number four was in the favor of the German Grandmaster. The number of wins with black. Having Winston scored two victories against Noderbeck one, he was declared the winner of Chess 960 tournament. Like Wang Liem took the third place with four and a half points. Also, it's notable to mention that Salem Saleh scored four wins three losses with no draws. Gata Komsky scored pretty much all of the draws in the tournament, three draws out of seven, really, really interesting games. So probably a tournament to forget for Arkady Nadic, uh, Yu Yangui, and for Gukesh, this was quite unfortunate finish because he did start three wins out of three, then he suffered a couple of losses in the row, and then in the final round, he did blunder very unfortunately Queen in one move against Salem Saleh. So the action will continue on Tuesday with the rapid tournament of the uh, Grandmaster Triathlon, which is the very first tournament in order to bring points. Uh, so uh, Andrei Yesipenko has arrived here, so he was unable to play in the Chess 960 tournament and he was substituted by Yu Yang Yi. He is here in Beal. So the action will resume with the rapid section. Don't miss it.